official party while our Metawa Ensemble performs our processional music, Jupiter from the Planet Suite by Gustav Holtz.
thank you very much for all our musicians. I'd now like to invite our Reverend Kim Duxfield to open our annual prize giving with a prayer. Kitenua o te matua o te tamaiti o te wairua tapu. Amen. Thank you, God, for the opportunity to gather together and celebrate the successes of our Ngātaro community. Thank you for the gift of our school, for the friendships and family, for the opportunities and challenges, for the achievements, the struggles and the growth we have experienced here. This year has been a testing year and we thank you for your constant presence with us, guiding, strengthening and enlivening us as a loving father giving us courage and perseverance. Holy Spirit, enrich our lives that we might all be constant examples of the way of Jesus, acting with respect, integrity, and courage. For a Christo et Ecclesiae, may we always and in everything serve Christ and his church. We ask this in the name of God, the creator, redeemer, and giver of life. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Kim. Good afternoon and a very warm welcome on a warm afternoon. Welcome to all our students and staff and to those of our community watching from home. Today we celebrate both the co-curricular and academic achievements of our students in our premier annual prize giving. Nanamai, Harimai, Tenakoto, 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 Katoa. I would now like to invite our principal, Mrs. Leslie Carter, to present her principal's report. Tenetato te whanau. Kua tai mai nei i tēnei rā, ki rāu o te korawai, o tō tātou me kūra. Kei te mihi, kei te mihi, kei te mihi. I welcome all of you who have arrived here today and are now in the shelter under the korawai of our school. Welcome to staff and students, and to board members, family and friends, including our guest speaker, Kerry Gala, who cannot be here today, but are watching at home. This is Natawa's 130th year. It is quite a milestone considering that 130 years ago our school began as a very small venture in a farmhouse in Shannon. We are all part of the continuing narrative of the school and carry forward the legacy of May Taylor and Mary Barker. These women wanted to educate women in a time when options were limited and tertiary education was rare. <coughs> education should be transformational and this is the heart of their legacy, and it is our hope for every student and our tower. In the latter part of this year, when once again we experienced a lockdown, I was in danger of reductionism, reducing our year through a tunnel vision to be solely focused on COVID-19. When our prefect team gave their final speeches for the school, none of them mentioned COVID-19. It was so refreshing, and I was reminded again of all that we had accomplished. They spoke of how much they enjoyed Natawa's 130th celebratory weekend in February. Three days of sport, acknowledgement of academic success, commissioning of student leadership, and the whole school picnic. Founders Day was another highlight, and that always involved significant planning and preparation by Year 13, who did a brilliant job of bringing Toy Story to life in Martin. My highlight was May 14th when we officially opened our 2.5 multi-purpose track, the result of a vision by our then Director of Sport, Claire Warner. With significant financial support from our PFA and old girls, every member of our community benefits from being able to exercise safely on campus and can utilise the wonderful, expansive rural environment we are blessed with. That day was a double celebration as we participated in the blessing of the commemorative Brick Wall, a visual reminder of all those who had shared in this kaupapa. 
Our old girls association drove this project and have gifted a very aesthetic space adjacent to our iconic chapel, which is another project being championed by the old girls. And we're excited for the restoration of this much loved sacred space to begin in 2022. Year 13's pledge to the school this year was to aspire to inspire, with a nod to May Taylor and early feminists. New Zealand, as we know, gave women the right to vote in 1893, the first country in the world to do so. And this has given us possibly an undeserved reputation as being a leader in gender equity. The second wave of feminism, which began in the late 60s and early 70s, was transformational for women of my era. We are gladdened when we see today's young women picking up that torch and challenging the glass ceiling, bringing New Zealand closer to the dream of true equity for all women. In an all-girls school where gender bias is not a daily reality, the realisation of its existence is an invaluable future in with awareness. In an article in November's North South magazine, declared this is the age of permanent anxiety. A global pandemic, lockdowns, COVID-19 restrictions, the ever-present spectre of climate change, and the influence of social media where some curate their lives and evaluate their worthiness based on likes, all contribute to the precarious nature of mental health. Well then, we define as functioning good, uh, feeling good and functioning well is therefore a pertinent school focus and continues to be championed here in Ottawa. There is a focus on building resilience practically, using mindfulness, being physically fit through sport and equestrian, getting outside in nature, especially on our Monday school wide run, limiting technology use, which is not always popular, promoting a spiritual life and having fun. Examples of this include our end of year food truck dinner, and the impressive Natawa Hoi organised by the Equestrian Academy in response to the cancellation of the real Hoi, and Health Day organised by Year 13 for their peers. Wellbeing has also continued as a focus of house charities this year and broadened to include animals when Southern House raised awareness of the work of Hoopa, which means helping you help animals. Academic and boarding staff have taken our wellbeing focus further working closely with the New Zealand Institute of Wellbeing and Resilience this year to understand and apply cognitive strategies to overcoming the negativity bias, like hunting the good stuff and avoiding the tendency to catastrophize. This was a successful annual plan target and the project will be extended in 2022 and delivered to our students through our mentor program. We want to create a robust, integrated wellbeing strategy, weaving together the strands of pastoral programs, spirituality, the health and PE curriculum, and biculturalism, to give our girls the skills and attitudes to positively manage their wellness and to live constructively in a community. Despite the challenges of 2021, we have largely achieved the three targets set in our annual plan. The first of these was to work on our bicultural journey of educating our young women to take their place as builders of Aotearoa New Zealand, shaped within a culture defined by the Te Tiriti or Waitangi Partnership. This has been an active participation in the Heika Kahukura project, a collaboration with Wanganui Secondary Schools, as well as the newly created Takatini Haora Kahuyaku. We have invested in teacher professional inquiry and work with the Wanganui Cluster supported by Dr Mike Kaki, and this work centres on embedding a consistent pedagogy, the effective teacher profile. Two key components of this are connectedness and ako, and so we seek to understand and foster what a learner brings to Natawa to support her success, her identity, culture and language. We celebrate and understand learner diversity as a strength, Staff and junior students have experienced a hikoi in the Rangitike and Whanganui, and our senior historians travel to Waitangi. We want our students to appreciate the stories of our whenua, and have incorporated place-based learning, reflecting the Mātūranga Māori across our curriculum. In February, we celebrated our 2020 NCEA success. 
Our girls once again achieved a 100% pass rate at levels of 1, 2 and 3. Our merit and excellence endorsement significantly exceeded the national average for decile 8 to 10 girls schools. And 100% of our students achieved university entrance. This was a really noteworthy achievement given the disrupted year our students have experienced. To be truly transformational in education, we must appreciate the wider human purpose of education and acknowledge that education is so much more than examination statistics, important as though these are. Nurturing attributes, values and competencies are part of equipping great young people to lead fulfilling and worthwhile lives. Aware of the need to impart 21st century skills to students, we once again focused on the key competencies embedded in the New Zealand curriculum and our school values, respect, integrity and courage. We know the acquisition of these grows student capability and helps them to develop a moral compass. Boarding is a superb teaching environment. The three boarding models we offer at Natawa mean that the majority of our community have the opportunity to enjoy and gain the skills from living in a supportive community where friendship through collaboration flourishes, as does independence. What we don't emphasise as often as we should is the significant contribution a boarding experience has in the successful transition to tertiary study and university life. As part of the 2021 professional development, Mrs Coralie Harvey and Ms Sally Jane Smith recently completed an inquiry focused on the impact boarding has on equipping our graduates for tertiary education, surveying our current Year 13 students as well as our past two Year 13 cohorts. The findings were very affirming and the girls felt that their boarding experience had enhanced the development of soft skills to support their transition and certainly help them to navigate their new learning and living environment. Service is a key characteristic enshrined in the ethos of this school, and we see it every day with our students supporting others, but equally from our committed staff who play a critical role in these transformative years. They willingly do that extra bit that being a small school demands. Now, Tawa is a village and it takes a village to raise a child, and everyone contributes to its overall success and well-being. Staff have immense pride in our tower, and they recognise that their efforts, both in and out of the classroom, build the school and its reputation for exceeding expectation. For most of our girls, the boarding houses are their second homes, and I'd like to acknowledge the dedication of the boarding and pastoral staff in providing that home away from home with its inherent family support. I want to acknowledge the administrative, grounds, catering and environmental teams who are equally committed to do an outstanding job. I'd like to thank the academic staff who are so invested in teaching and have a real authentic heart for the difference they can make. Particularly this year, where once again they've had a short amount of time to transition into teaching online. Again, we contributed with our timetable and as a result, our community were able to remain engaged in teaching and learning. In addition, staff have had to engage in significant curriculum and assessment reviews to prepare for the changes to NCEA and the New Zealand Histories Project. We are delighted in our selection to be a pilot school for trialling new 11, 1, 11 1 achievement standards. I am extremely grateful to our dedicated senior management team Vicky Power, Catherine Wood and Helen Campbell. Together they embody servant leadership and have exceeded expectations daily in their commitment to Natawa and their drive to pursue excellence. Our two school boards are effective, collegial and focused on the needs of the students and bettering the school environment. There is a great deal of synergy between the boards which is largely due to the board chairs and I especially want to thank both chairs, Roger Dowerful and David Green, for their encouragement generosity of their time and willingness to champion and support new practice. Our PFA and old girls are tremendously supportive of the school, providing helping hands and targeted funding to enhance the functioning of our tower. And to the students, today is all about you. Congratulations to all the students receiving awards today. You've worked hard for this achievement and you deserve to celebrate your success. I also want to acknowledge all of you who gave your best in this challenging year. No one can ask more of you. 
And while we generously celebrate success and have acknowledged high student achievement regionally and nationally in a range of endeavours, we are equally proud when we see kindness, generosity, compassion, our spirit and a willingness to serve. To our Year 13 graduates, I wish you all the very best for new ventures as you embrace life beyond the Green Gates. We acknowledge your extraordinary potential and we look forward to your future successes and the difference you will make. Our student leadership team of prefects and deputies have made an outstanding contribution to all that has been accomplished in one very busy year at Natawa. House competition, humanities, sport, equestrian, scholarship and faith have all been enriched by your service. This year has been demanding and definitely not what you would have expected in your, that your year 13 year would be, but you helped the school move through the challenging times to adapt to the restrictions and still achieve many of the traditions and events that would characterise any year. Thank you. In another challenging year, I'd like to acknowledge the courage we have witnessed, which is one of our school values. Firstly, from our international students who could not return home again for holidays. Our students and staff who have had to adapt very quickly for a second consecutive year to an online format of teaching and learning and did so successfully. To our parents who had the courage and confidence to invest in a boarding environment amid regional border closures and uncertainty of infection. Thank you to our parent community. Your support of Natawa is so valued and I want to especially acknowledge our year 13 parents who have been unable to attend our traditional end of year celebrations. We are all saddened that this year you are limited to a recorded event. 130 years ago the story of this school began and we are all part of the continuing narrative carrying forward the legacy of May Taylor and Mary Barker. We hold true to our special character, our values, and a commitment to growing and equipping our young women for their future, the shaping of Aotearoa New Zealand. I wish you all a blessed Christmas with family and friends, safe travel and happy holidays. Namihi Maori Kiri Emete. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Carter. I'd like to invite our head prefect, Ms. Jessica Law, to make a presentation to Mrs. Carter. Thank you, Jessica. Could I ask you now to please stand for the Waiata Te Honore and join in after the introductory part of our playground to you.
move on to the first awards of the afternoon. Students, can I remind you to come up to the stage quickly to accept your award, but to take some time to cross the stage, receive your certificate or trophy, and then um, make sure that we do glimpse you on the video camera for your parents watching at home. After you've received your trophy and certificate, please move around the side and go to see Mr McDermott at the back, take your masks off, have your photograph taken. At the conclusion of the ceremony, please ensure that all cups and trophies are returned to the stage. I'd like to now invite our principal, Mrs. Leslie Carter, to present some outstanding uh, academic special mention awards that we unfortunately missed yesterday, our apologies, in the Colours Award Assembly. So I'd like to announce these students forward in two groups. For our first group, can I call Ashley Hanegram, Adelaide Roper, Delta Smith, and Harriet Whitfield. So a reminder, these academic special mentions are for level three endorsement of subject at excellence based off their internal assessment and derived grade examination results. Uh, yesterday, unfortunately, we presented Ashley with the incorrect subject, so I'm recalling Ashley to the stage. Ashley Hennegraaf, special mention for biology. And Adelaide Roper received a special mention for food and nutrition. And Delta Smith received a special mention for agribusiness. And Harriet Whitfield receives a special mention for physical education. Congratulations, girls. Please can I call the second group? Hannah Wickens, Georgia Taylor, and Mila Walton. receives a special mention for English and for History. Georgia Taylor receives a special mention for Classical Studies, English and History. And Mila Walton France receives a special mention for Biology, Chemistry and Physics. Our congratulations, girls, and apologies again, we missed them somehow yesterday. I'd now like to invite Mr. David TP to please announce the Humanities Awards today as I present them. Rachel Walton took a cup for a recent singing in the face of The instrumental prize for outstanding instrumental performance this is a joint award um, awarded to Kip Kwan Yao and Ed Sintia and Rebecca Kong. Go on, we'll see. For creativity in the composition, for outstanding, for outstanding creative music composition, and agree.
repertory for for excellence in senior contemporary music. Dead on the fashion tour. Chorister's Prize for Head Chorister of 2021, Day Life. And the John Quinton Cup and Prize for contribution to drama over a number of years. The Associate of Trinity College, London Speech and Drama, Level 4 Diploma in Performing, Adelaide Roper. Trinity College London Public Speaking, Level 4 Diploma in Communication Skills with Distinction, Georgia Taylor. Please come forward and announce the Christian Awards and Mrs. Carl to continue presenting. It's my pleasure to award these. I'd like to present the Buick Rose Bowl for consistent effort in equestrian to Antoinette Taylor, who is not here. We'll move right along to the Miles Family Trophy for success in competition. Um, we awarded this yesterday um, to two um, students, and one wasn't here, but she is today. So Molly Pike, could you please come forward and receive this? The Catherine Darren Hall Trophy for Leadership and Ability in Equestrian is presented to our 2021 Head of Equestrian, Lily Carpenter.
very much to Mr. TP and to Mrs. Rayner. I'd now like to invite Mrs. Catherine Wood as our Director of Wellbeing to please present the service awards while I announce the students. Please can I call forward Anna Green. Receiving the Palmari Trophy and Prize for Outstanding Contribution to Humanities, Anna Green. Humanities in the Junior School, Yang Ki Chan. Please can I call to stage Paloma Yang. Receiving the NJ Walkington Family Cup for service to humanities in year 11, Paloma Yang. Please may I call Jane Larkin to the stage. Receiving the branch cup, cup for creativity, for creativity that has been shared with the school for a number of years, Jane Larkin. Jade Larkin, head of Scrot. Anna 
and Hannah Wickens, Head of Study. I think you'll agree they've been a fantastic team of prefects. Let's give them a big round of applause. in Duxfield to present the next set of awards, our Special Character Awards. Please can I call Lauren Burnett to the stage. Sacristan's Prize for Service to the Chapel, Lauren Burnett. Samantha Nicholson to the stage. Receiving today the Right Reverend Sir Edward Norman Memorial Prize for service to the chapel, Samantha Nicholson. Special Character School, Talia Harvey. Thank you, Reverend Duxfield. We're going to sit back now and enjoy our first musical interlude, which will be performed by our Kappa Hatha group. So over to Mr. TP. Go. 
I'd now like to invite Mrs. Carter forward to introduce our guest speaker. It is quite unusual to introduce a guest speaker who's not here. But unfortunately, Kerry Gala um, is unwell and so can't be with us, but has prepared a video for us to watch. So I'll just tell you something about Kerry before we uh, watch the video. So Kerry is um, an Olympian and a Tower Old Girl. She's a New Zealand rower, she's a national champion, an Olympic champion, a double medalist, a three-time world champion and a current world champion, both in the Coxless Pier and the Women's Eight. Now, Tawa first offered a rowing program in 2008 and a year later, Kerry took it up. At the time, she was also a, a competitor <coughs> as an equestrian, but soon started focusing on rowing so much that she had to choose between the two. Her natural rowing talent was very evident as her trainer told her within three weeks after she'd started rowing that one day she would represent New Zealand. So we will now watch a message from Kerry. Kerry Gala. Sorry I can't be there today. I'm not feeling the best and um, didn't want to travel on this climate or make any of you sick. So yeah, I just want to congratulate all the award recipients today. Huge achievements. That's um, a testament to your hard work. So congratulations. Um, earlier this year I competed at the Tokyo Olympics in the women's pair and we won gold. This one here. Um, and I was also a part of the Women's Eight and we won a silver medal. Uh, I just want to share a few of my learnings along my journey. Um, and so basically I think that you just need to take your opportunities. Um, very exciting stages for you all, whether it's heading off to high school or a couple more years at school, I think. There's so many opportunities ahead of you and don't be afraid to take them. I think you need to put yourself out there to grow as a person and um, for Grace and I, we only wanted to compete in one boat class at the Olympics as we were too afraid. We thought that we'd be extending ourselves a little bit much and what if we didn't do as well in the pier if we're in the eight or if we're in the eight um, and we don't do well because we're in the pier as well and so many things we didn't we didn't want to be seen as greedy because we were trying to do two events and then we actually ended up changing our mindset to this is a huge opportunity that not many people get to do and no one from New Zealand rowing has ever done so we sort of just put ourselves out there at the risk of failing and it paid off because we did everything in our power to to work towards this goal. Um, so yeah, I think take your opportunities, don't be afraid. If you fail, you will learn something from them. I think some of my hardest times, I've learned a lot about who I am as a person and grown from them. Um, in 2016, we thought that we um, would be the women's pair for the Olympics and we lost a race at trials that we needed to win and this was a huge blow for us. We'd, we'd never lost a race as a combination domestically before, so it was it was hard to take. And then we then went on and got fourth in the women's eight at the Olympics while the pair won silver. So this was a really brutal time for us, um, but we took away some massive key learnings which have guided our journey to gold in Tokyo, and I don't believe we would have won that gold having not had that those hard times or learn from those experiences. So don't be afraid to fail. I think 
you're yeah you you're gonna learn something you're gonna grow as a person and yeah nothing beats that um, I think build people up around you I think having a mindset of um, wanting to beat people or hoping people won't win or hoping people don't do better than you at something or um, only create sort of pushing people down and I think once you change your mindset to um, if someone's better than you at something or in my case if someone was faster than me on the water if I trained as hard as I could to be as fast as them or push them along I'm going to get faster, they're going to get faster, our whole team's going to get faster um, and that sort of mindset is really really key for culture and um, culture and environment and you can only get that when you're surrounding yourself by great people and great friends. Um, something that I will always cherish from my time at Nautawa is I made really great friends and uh, it doesn't matter how much time has passed or the different pathways that we've taken, whenever we catch up it's like no time has passed and it's so great. Um, I think Nautawa teaches you really great life lessons and um, the values and courage that you learn at Natawa are huge skills that you will all find out but are hugely beneficial to your future lives. Um, so yeah, I think really, really have fun with it, um, enjoy everything you do, put yourself out there, um, don't be afraid to be vulnerable um, at the risk of failing, you will learn something and yeah, you, you earn huge respect from trying to set goals that are a bit ambitious or and it's hugely rewarding so yeah really have fun enjoy your journeys super exciting and yeah thank you We want to thank Harry for putting that video together for us and for her very inspirational words. She was once sitting where you are and look at what she has achieved, what you all can achieve. So please can I ask us all to stand and we're just going to sing Kerry and Waiata. We're going to sing Tuya. Please join in after the introductory block bars played by Mr. TP.
thank you, school. Thank you, Mr. Chief. Thank you for accompanying us. We're now going to move on to our first academic awards of the afternoon from our premier uh, prizes. I'd like to invite Mrs. Catherine Wood, our Director of Wellbeing, to present the Outstanding Academic Awards for Year 9 to 10. In the Junior School, the Top Scholars Awards are based on the number of excellence and merit grades across all subjects. Please can I call forward to the stage Madeleine Bond, Gabrielle Caban and Olivia Whale. Madeleine Bond, third in year nine. Gabrielle Caban, second in year nine. And Olivia Whale placed first in year nine. Olivia Clifton and Ivy Roberts. Lauren Burnett, third in year 11. Olivia Clifton, second in year 11.
I'd now like to invite Mrs. Carter to present the subject awards and scholarships gained by year 13. We'll begin with the subject awards. Please can I call Hannah Wickens, Delta Smith, Mila Walton France, and Emily Braithwaite to the stage. We're presenting first in subjects awarded for subject excellence and high academic attainment at level three for a subject. Hannah Wickens for art photography. Delta Smith. for agribusiness. Mila Walton France for biology. And Emily Braithwaite for digital technology. Please can I call Sophia Lewis Annabella Tompkins, Ashley Hannegraaf, and Kenzie Janae to the stage. First in subjects for subject excellence on high academic attainment, Sophia Lewis, for drama. Annabella Tompkins, for level three, written English. Ashley Hanegraaff, for health education. And Kenzie Janae, for physical education. I call Lily Carpenter, Adelaide Roper, Roper Tarana Tasha Inchawong, Mackenzie Jury, and Emma Rokoroda. So, receiving subject excellence for their high academic attainment in level three, Lily Carpenter, Equine Studies, Adelaide Roper. Home Economics. Taylor and Natasha Interwell. Music. Mackenzie Jewelry. For Level 3 Spanish. And Emma Rotoroda. For Statistics. Samantha Nicholson, Rena Carano, and Georgia Taylor. Receiving their subject excellence and high academic attainment recognition today, Samantha Nicholson for calculus and for earth and space science. Rena Carano for accounting and chemistry and physics. And Georgia Taylor for business in innovation, classical studies, English visual and history. Congratulations. resulting in ranking third for year 13 from her grade point average across five subjects. Standing third in academics, congratulations to Mila Walton France. We now 
now move on to our tertiary scholarship award announcements. Please can I call Anna Green to the stage. Anna Green has been offered two scholarships, the University of Otago New Frontiers Excellence Entrance Scholarship valued up to three and a half thousand dollars and the one that she will be taking the University of Auckland Acceptance into the Science Scholars Programme for Academic Excellence. Congratulations Anna. <laughs> Please can I call Adelaide Roper to stage. Adelaide has been offered the New Frontiers Excellence Entrance Scholarship from the University of Otago, which is valued up to $5,000. Congratulations, Adelaide. <laughs> Please may I call Lily Carpenter to the stage. Lily has been offered a Massey University Academy of Sports Scholarship valued up to $5,000. Congratulations, Lily. <laughs> Please can I call Georgia Taylor to the stage. Georgia has been offered two scholarships, one for the University of Canterbury, the Hirani Scholarship for Academic Excellence valued up to $5,000 and also for Victoria University, and this one is $5,000 towards that hostel cost. Congratulations, George. <laughs> Please can I call Samantha Nicholson to the stage. Samantha Nicholson has been offered two scholarships, one from the University of Otago, Leaders of Tomorrow Entrance Scholarship, valued up to $6,000, and a second for Victoria University at Wellington, again at $5,000 towards hostel costs. Congratulations, Samantha. <laughs> Please can I call Rena Hirano. Rina has been offered a University of Otago Vice Chancellor Scholarship for International Students. This is valued up to $10,000. Congratulations, Rina. <laughs> calling Midler Water France. The University of Otago Leaders of Tomorrow Entrance Scholarship has been offered to Mila valued $10,000. Please can I call Kate Ferguson to the stage. Kate Ferguson has been offered the University of Otago Maori Entrance Scholarship. This scholarship is valued at $15,000 over two years. Congratulations to Kate. Please can I call Harriet Whitfield to the stage. Harriet has been offered the University of Otago Scholarship for Outstanding Academic Achievement, which is valued up to $25,000. Congratulations, Harriet. Thank you, Mrs. Carter. I'd now like to invite Ms. Jessica Lord as our head girl to please come forward and present the head prefects report. Coming up to my final days here as a Natawa student, I've had, to, I've had to spend a lot of time thinking about my future. A future away from the home I've kept here for the past five years. And while this may invoke a few different emotions, it most importantly encourages me to think about school and how grateful I am for the memories made here and the skills learned. It's very easy for young school graduates to get swept up in what the near future holds, so much so that you miss what's here in front of you. I'm totally guilty of this. I've just started a job, 
meet a new group of friends at home, and I'm exploring student life opportunities around university next year. It's so valuable, however, to stop and look at what you've learned. Something that school has taught me is that life is like a series of classes in the school day. As we move through an average school day, we'll have period one, the hardest class of all. This class is what determines how the rest of your day goes. Who's in it, the temperature of the classroom, and whether it's a nice subject or it's calculus, are all relevant factors. We then have second period. This period can feel very long and a little unnerving because you didn't have breakfast and you're starting to feel it. This period is similar to the first in the way that you need an extra helping hand from your teacher to work off your morning brain. However, you've settled into the school environment again enough that you're ready to work productively for the rest of the day. After a quick morning tea break, period three rolls around and you realise that you're basically over halfway through the school day. You're thinking about lunch a little too much, but you feel confident in your class learning and just pump through it with little difficulty. Periods four and five, you've had to come back after lunch and some of us are feeling a little bit over it. But this is still a key, key time to keep learning as your brain is more capable of locking the information in at this time. Your hands have warmed up to writing or typing and you already feel as if you've conquered the day from the hard work you put in earlier. Coming into flexi time, you get to choose whether you continue working hard on the same things you were doing in school or you can move on to something extracurricular. So first period, these are the foundations of life. I think that the period one represents the time before schooling in which our parents will remember best. It's full of new developments like toilet training and learning to speak proper English. This is a time where we need our hands held to give us optimism, motivation and creativity. Second period, the shaping. Here is that time in which we may have started school, sport, or a hobby in which involves a little independence. We've just had our extensive learning and introduction to the world, and now it's time to start exercising that. My personal examples of this are my many hobbies in which only a few have survived for me today. I can thank my mother for that one. The three that made it are musical instrument, swimming, and equestrian. Now, my list of the ones I can remember that made it to maybe year eight at the latest are taekwondo, ballet, jazz, hip hop, choir singing, most of the rugby's you could think of, and I'm sure there are more. It's funny to think that I made so many different friends and could be so busy as a young girl. It's also funny to see what hobbies I continue and what I may pick up later, like netball. But as many as there were on that list, it could seem like they may have been a waste of time. Absolutely not. For one thing, I could, have the conf I could have the confidence now to try my hand at literally anything. But most importantly, I understand that from each new experience, I picked up on new skills and ideas, regardless of whether I enjoyed the experience and wanted to continue it or not. Period three, the transition stage. This is the stage I feel as though I'm in now. Disclaimer, this analogy isn't time proportionate, so I'm not saying that I'm over halfway through my life but rather I'm over halfway through my academic learning, hopefully. <laughs> so while sitting my final exams, I'll admit I was thinking about the Christmas holidays a little too much, as I'm sure we all are. My last exam was Friday morning, and looking down the home stretch, I knew I just had to knuckle down and do my best. Shout out to the girls who have the exams next week, make the most of them, and good luck. However, what I am learning throughout this stage is that there is a transition commencing. As large fish, we have ruled the pond this year. Us year 13s are now getting thrown into a much bigger one. We are to learn the ways of the world, but instead of the nurturing guidance we've had at school that spells out every objective and ways to get there, we will be learning things as we pick up on and as we go. We will learn things through much more trial and error, because with more freedom comes responsibility. There are no hefty bills getting paid for us behind the scenes and no teachers at flexi time to throw all your problems onto at the last second before an exam. I won't relate to the remaining periods of the day because I'm simply not past my transitioning stage, but I will be interested to come back to this and read it when I am. My appreciation for this school is immeasurable. 
the values of respect, integrity, and courage are held very close to my heart. The house spirit is something I will never forget, and the opportunities readily available to me over the years is astonishing. As a 2021 leader, I can speak for all of us when I say, appreciate the school while you can. In light of this appreciation, I'd like to make some quick thank yous. I'd first like to thank Mila. This year, you've become such a rock and a close friend of mine. Your critical thinking and articulate hand has served a major role in keeping our job manageable. I truly mean it when I say I couldn't have done it without you. I'd like to make a personal thank you to Mrs. Jackson at the back. Over my five short years at school, you've helped me come right out of my shell by encouraging me to hone in on my competitive spark and branch out to new things within the house. An obvious thank you goes to my family, as without you I wouldn't be standing on stage here today. Not only has your financial support landed me here, but your careful moulding and nurture early on that has inspired me to take on the world as a confident young woman who is sure of herself. And finally, I'd like to thank the school as a whole and Mrs Carter. This year has been a memorable one, and I will always owe gratitude to each and every one of you for that. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Jessica, for your speech. I think we all thoroughly enjoyed that. I'm not sure which period some of us are in. <laughs> but we're in the last leg of this afternoon's awards. I'd like to now invite Miss Katie Gilmore forward to represent the Natawa Old Girls Association and present the Natawa Old Girls Prize and Badge, which Mrs. Carter is going to announce. Nanatawa Old Girls Prize for Outstanding Service is a head prefect and it goes obviously to Jessica Lord. Well deserved. <laughs> we also have the Natawa Old Girls Badge for a Year 12 student who has given her best to the Natawa community across a range of activities and who has demonstrated wholeheartedly the school values of integrity, respect and courage and is going on to year 13. Rebecca Cole. of this afternoon and I would ask Ms Carter to pre please present our Premier Awards for 2021. Please can I call forward Samantha Whiteman. Samantha Whiteman receives the Peas Cup for Good Citizenship in the Junior School. Please may I call forward Lauren Burnett. Lauren Burnett receives the Garmin's Way Cup for Good Effort in Year 11 for good effort in all aspects of school life. Please may I call forward Natalie Bone and Amber Scott. The Martin Borough Cup for showing industry and citizenship in year 12 is shared equally this year between Natalie Bone and Amber Scott. Please may I call 
We have one more prize to award. This is the Natawa Prize for an outstanding contribution to a range of activities over a number of years, and it's awarded to Jessica Lord. And before uh, we announce the Prefect team for 2022, I have um, two or three awards I want to give my own, so you'll just have to wait another few minutes. <laughs> These are just a personal gift from me to Jessica and Mila. I meant to have given it to them at the prefect dinner and I actually forgot. And I forgot last night as well. <laughs> so it's getting pretty late. And I if I don't present them today, they're not going to get them at all. So I did manage to remember them today. So this is one each for Mila and Jessica for just a wonderful, wonderful year. So Jessie and Mila. As you'll be aware, this year has been very difficult and very challenging, and it has been challenging particularly for our Director of Operations, which is Mrs Vicky Carr. She's had to arrange and rearrange events um, a number of times, including the whole of this last week. She's arranged it at least twice, I think. We've had several versions, not because she's making errors, just simply because we're just trying to get the best outcome. And so I think I really wanted to acknowledge all the effort that's gone into all her organisation over the year, but particularly in this last term when conditions have been very trying. So these are for you, Mrs. Power. And now we have the prefects for 2022. So could I have our prefect team along the front, please, for one last time? And could we just have another round of applause for a brilliant team? And the girls asked me last night, could they hug the people who are going to be the prefects for 2022 and the CTS? <laughs> so, our head girl for 2022 is, I always like this moment, because <laughs> it's the best moment in the ceremony. Head girl for 2022, Amy Ellis. Rebecca Kong. Our Head of Chapel and Service, Natalie Bone. Head Scholar, Emma Clark. Head of Equestrian, Molly Pice. <laughs> Head of Sport, Mariah Graham. <laughs> Head of Humanities, Emma Ferguson.
Peter Stunham, Georgie Fright. Ida Birch, Amber Scott. <laughs> and here Barker, Helena Olney. Congratulations to all of you. I think you'll be an absolutely brilliant team. Well done.
Congratulations once again to all our award winners and to your proud parents and caregivers watching from home. We would like to wish you all a happy Christmas and a peace-filled new year. I would like to request that the staff and students please stand for our recessional music performance as the official party leaves the stage and then remain standing for some further instruction. 